Okay, so welcome to yet another day of A Type I 2020 all over. This is happening 24 7. So for five days, we'll be having conference day and night. So wherever you are right now, welcome and good morning, good afternoon, good night according to your time. So uh, we'll be introducing um, our presenter who will be presenting on the topic of robbing colonialism at Surat Cemeteries. So the presenter we have Jenna Bastola and Jenna Bastola is an educator, typographer, and sign collector. She required a bachelor, she acquired a bachelor degree in visual communication design for Swiburn University and master degree in type design from University of Reading. So Bastola teaches at the Srishti Manipal Institute of Art, Design and Techn Technology in Manipal, India. Here she founded Thinking Letter Form, a letterpress print lab where she conducts workshop on the theory and practice of typography and typesetting. So Bastola has particularly interest in Indian archives and experimental tools used to create indicator form that have visual texture and contemporary interpretation of traditionals. So we welcome, we welcome our presenter. So uh, we'll be playing your presentation. Um, and then we'll also have question answer round. So if you have any question, any queries, any curiosity that you would like to ask to our presenter, then you can write it down on the chat section or preferably on the question answer section so that we can find it out easily. So we'll be starting here, the presentation. Thank you, Etai Pai, uh, for letting me screen, share my screen. Uh, thank you, Jerry. Thank you, Shelly, for your guidance. Uh, I would also like to say thank you to Gore Kostas and Sanjay Bai for sharing me their pictures uh, about the cemetery. Uh, I would begin with uh, uh, showing you a video documentation that uh, has been done around these cemeteries. So I'm going to talk about the three cemeteries here, begin with British, uh, Dutch and Armenian. So the oldest cemetery here is the Armenian, which is around 1500. Dutch is 1600 and the British is around 1700. So this is uh, the British cemetery. In Surat, we also call it as an English cemetery. Um, uh, this cemetery is uh, sitting on the total square meter area around 800 to 900. And there are 250 graves on record. Um, it is also known as Alam, um, Alam Pana, uh, which means Bacha or which means a place where you can come and rest. So, during the 17th century, when East India Company merchants settled in uh, the Surat city, and, and at that time it was actually controlled by the Mughal Empire. So, um, the most important uh, uh, aspect, I would say, that where English cemetery uh, has been impressively uh, uh, built up, was built up by the brick and the stucco tombs were established here and the style and the nature of these monuments provided an insight into the cultural interaction that took place between the English merchants and the local population. Um, as well as the in indicating that the political aspirations of, of the East India Company officials. A description of these tombs earliest was 1649, which is followed by a discussion of the origins. Um, then origins of the cemetery, then the chronology of the tombs and the identity and the status of the dead. It is shown how the adoption of this Indo-Islamic architecture styles uh, uh, from the earliest tombs was modified during this 18th century and by the increasing use of Western architectural features in line uh, with the growing British power um, in India during that period. Uh, there were a lot of modification and changes happened. Uh, also, uh, uh, it says that during this changing attitude of British visitors, a lot of um, 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 uh, changes were actually done by parallelly uh, between this uh, 20, uh, 17 to 20th century. Um, I would start with a brief description of the distingu distinguished architecture style of few of the important tombs uh, in this British uh, cemetery. 
and which I would like to begin with uh, the tomb of Geral Unger, uh, where if you will see uh, uh, the 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 Muslim uh, is actually uh, strangely enough that it has original inscription and uh, sub, uh, it's been actually um, enhanced or uh, I would say developed by a, a lot of detail and intricacy of um, uh, Dutch and uh, British uh, Britishers as well as as of that time. Um, to to address these uh, cupolas, were, which are actually massive in, in size, I would say approximately in the diameter of uh, 40, I would say 12.2 meters by uh, 7.6 meters uh, respectively in the diameter. And they are supported by the pillars and the, and, and the round interiors, uh, the galleries reached uh, by the flight of the many steps. The translation of this inscription is done on Latin and uh, mostly on a large marble slabs. The upper compartment of the Muslim uh, has also been followed with some uh, inscriptions uh, which uh, would uh, say about the whole, uh, maybe the history of the person or um, also about an, um, the importance what they hold during the affair in, in Surat. So, um, yeah, so this is uh, one of the interior of the muslin and where you can see those decorative arrangement happening on the top of the um, uh, cupolas. Still, uh, it's, it's in the original condition. Uh, I mean, the, the use or the colors which have been used uh, are not being uh, withered. Um, so the site, overall the site is actually being looked after by Archaeological Survey of India and the other body is intact. So the restoration happens now and then uh, according to the ruins uh, which they have to fix it I think in every year. Um, this is the Dutch and the Armenian cemetery uh, which is also was known as Gulam Falia and which sits on approximately the square meter of 1500. Gulam Falia means Gulam means uh, prisoner or slave, and Falia means street. So, uh, interesting bit of this cemetery is that there was an Armenian chapel, which is this one, and uh, this chapel used to hold a very old uh, Bible, which is um, been missing, as being said by the guys over there. So, yeah. Um, this is an overall uh, structure of the Dutch uh, muslin. So carry on uh, with the location of the cemeteries. Uh, this is the map I would like to show you where the red dot is. We're going to follow that cursor. It's all located on the western coast of India uh, near Gujarat. This is Surat. And the outline what you're looking here is Katargam, which is one of the suburb in Surat. This is the Dutch cemetery and this one is the Dutch and Armenian and this one is the British cemetery. The, also there is a uh, bird eye view of the British cemetery. This is the 16 monument tomb location and I have tried to do uh, number 12 which is the Elizabeth Wilde um, grave and 16a which is Henry Gary's uh, grave. So this was done in 2019 in December last year when I went to visit the cemetery again and I went with uh, some charcoals and tracing papers to just try out if I can get some uh, impressions. So this is the first one I'm trying to do the Henry Gary one. This is the second one. Um, so uh, the interesting bit of these rubbings were all the three uh, uh, graves which I have tried to trace it out uh, are actually located in a different uh, um, area and even on a proportion. So the first one was actually intact mounted inside the uh, um, uh, structure. The This one, um, the Elizabeth Wild one was actually almost a three feet height bed lying on the top of the grave 
and and so these are the inscriptions from the grave itself um, uh, this slab was having approximately four different styles of uh, lettering uh, i would say it had uh, um, a, a high contrast uh, uh, roman to the uh, i would say black letter or an english letter um, uh, lettering style uh, this is the armenian uh, chapel where on the floor they have mounted all the stones and um, I'm just trying to get an impression from one of the stones. Um, this was around 1779 slab. Um, I don't speak Armenian, but uh, if I have to go ahead, I might have to uh, look into it and then uh, try some, um, uh, ask some um, uh, specialization to actually come across what, what it says. Um, to, to carry on with the first grave, I would like to uh, address some details what I have found. Um, this is the ob uh, ob um, Oblasic, um, uh, uh, where it's almost two meters um, on the top, if you will see, and, and there is a lotus finale which ends to it. Um, which makes a very distinct feature for this grave because this is uh, a grave of a 14 year old um, who passed away and it's been um, actually written on, in his memory in 1658. Um, the interesting bit of this slab or the stone writing was um, that uh, very distinct features of lettering were been noticed so I could not um, um, like I could not notice that uh, the G actually looks a lot like Elvis hair and uh, so it, it's like a bulb or sitting on the character so a lot of magical letters have those similarities um, in in this single uh, tablet um, also there were uh, fluorones and features uh, which were addressed on the minuscule letters like this uh, character C which looks like there is a there is a feature of a horn sitting on the top of the character um, uh, I don't know maybe it can be an accent or uh, they tried to put an accent but uh, I'm not sure about it so uh, to look into all those specification and detail is something what this project uh, uh, has um, uh, has been started on and I wish to carry forward with uh, a lot of findings interesting features and also um, uh, to uh, give a context on and historical norms as well uh, because if in future if I'm trying to uh, make an archive of, of these characters or the letter pieces um, I would like it to be addressed to the style which is being it has been inherited from. So I would say that uh, when I was making a speculation um, and trying to figure it out, where would, would these styles will be approaching from? So it addresses that um, Edward Cooker, who was um, a 1600 um, um, centuries engraver and a writer, who was actually a lot influenced by Italian and French designers at that time, was uh, um, I am uh, guessing that uh, he might have his style might have been addressed by the engravers uh, who have might uh, been uh, chiseled or uh, carved these uh, slabs. Um, so uh, to take it forward that these are the little details uh, where I have tried to pad up and uh, say if I can see any uh, matchings or let's say arrangement of the flourish or the florence uh, having any similar patterns um, so uh, which I can address uh, later uh, according to any historical context. Uh, these are uh, several S like uh, manuscript S I would say. Uh, been um, addressed in the tablet itself. Um, it's almost eight styles, almost, sorry, almost ten styles of uh, the characters. There were two different lowercase g's. So, in short, the whole tablet was made up of uh, very distinct features, and uh, I, I guess it was. Uh, 
the carver who have got a full freedom of actually using variations of uh, each characters. So um, this is uh, um, an experiment I have done on uh, by actually tracing and then drawing and then making a drawing digitalized. This is just a trial version and trying to actually add up or uh, uh, maybe uh, minus some of the features which were not uh, been uh, needed when I traced at them. Because this is an insights letter, the tracing was very different than actually the rubbing. So this is the reference I'm giving of Edward Cooker uh, lettering style, which he, he has done in 1660s, and which he was being um, influenced by Cressy and Les Renet, uh, who were the Italian and French artists. Um, looking forward, when uh, I was uh, trying to mix match this style uh, and trying to see that if I can see any similarities uh, between the Edward Cooker uh, stylish or the craftsmen who would have actually carved in India or uh, probably uh, those uh, craftsmen who have got influenced by the sleds which were being imported by, by, uh, from Britain. Um, uh, that, that shows a lot of um, understanding that these carvings were um, not actually done in India but, but influenced uh, by the uh, Europeans or the Britishians. Um, it also says that um, uh, the, Dutch, the Dutch cemetery uh, slabs were actually imported from Netherlands. So uh, the the right the, the lettering which is actually sitting in the Dutch cemetery are the origins from the Netherlands itself. Um, also to reflect that uh, when I am creating a metadata for this uh, um, cemetery, uh, it's very important for me to address this historical context, which uh, aims and gives a reflection that how these design might have flourished and how this design have, would have carried forward um, and also uh, would have been influenced by many um, Indian artists or Indian craftsmen because such florons we can see with uh, in uh, Mughal um, um, uh, architecture as well. So uh, that's just my speculation I am making over here. Uh, moving along, I have also taken some of the details of the letters which were being uh, carved on the grave. So some were actually chiseled out and some were um, some of the uh, material were actually cut out from the uh, open uh, counters or maybe the space uh, outside the letters. Um, they've been actually cheesed out. Um, also, um, some have a very detailed uh, uh, manner of thin and thick lines. The strokes are very delicate. So some are almost vanished. Uh, but because some are chisel cut uh, and it seems like uh, they were being um, overly done like twice and thrice, uh, so the depth of the characters are still existing. Um, as you can see here that uh, a variety of lettering styles uh, have been found uh, in the cemetery. So um, when I visited and I, I saw some of the uh, graves, each slab uh, would have at least four or five different uh, stylistic features and lettering um, uh, on the grave. Uh, even there were very uh, diverse, diversification between the numerals uh, as they were written. So uh, the typography on the on the um, slab was 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 actually planned, but for some they were being just chiseled out. So it seems like uh, because uh, um, uh, during 17th century and nearby the 18th or 19th century, uh, it might have happened that uh, these uh, um, uh, cowed letters uh, would have got a double um, chisel or maybe cowed out again. Uh, because of that, sometimes you can see dual impressions on the letter itself. Um, some are um, just being uh, engraved and some are actually being uh, scrapped out. So um, uh, looking at those details and uh, thinking that how this um, data which I would like to um, collect or um, to make a, a file or an archive 
is is a big question and also why i would like to do that because um, um, as you see uh, the cemetery is almost uh, following apart and uh, yes it has been looked after but uh, it has been looked after from a structural point of view not from the lettering point of view so uh, if you will see even if the structures are maintained but not the lettering here i have noticed that some of the kids were actually playing on the uh, uh, sleds where the writings were there it is also a place for sleeping and yes it is also a place for nature to grow um, so this uh, uh, scenery what you're looking here is like the whole land of the grave and maybe some of the graves are actually sitting underneath the uh, shrubs or the plants as well um, these are some of the fragments of um, the graves uh, fallen apart this is first one is in a marble second one is in granite and the third one actually is the chisel out uh, it is cemented so that means half of the cement is running over the letters itself um, this is the broken grave um, almost it is falling apart the, the slab is sitting on it um, and that's a stone slab is sitting on it and uh, yes there were a lot of um, cigarette butts and uh, matchsticks and so and so. So uh, I am open for questions, suggestions and feedback uh, uh, for, for this project uh, because I really think that uh, this cemetery needs a good refurbishment and an archive. Thank you. Thank you for listening to me and uh, looking for a chat. It's so good to see you, Jen. Uh, good to see you too. <laughs> wow, that was like a little uh, train wreck kind of <laughs> working, stopping, working, stopping. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, like, it yeah. makes a continuity. But anyways, <laughs> I hope somebody would have got something out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so first of all, congratulations for that beautiful presentation. It was really inspiring and very insightful. <laughs> Um, Thank you, Jen, because uh, I'm actually seeking for some of the questions. If there is any question, you can write it down so that Jen can answer right now. Uh, if there is any question yeah, from our audience, for I guess there is no question, but I have some questions. For sure. oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, you know, after watching the video, it, it's like, you know, working very sensitively. It's... Um, working in the graveyard and finding out you know something that is hidden is completely something that really takes a lot of effort and also guts so i wanted to know what actually motivated you to start this project um it's always letters you see <laughs> they're the one who influence you to go to places to places isn't it and uh, it was so strange that me living in surat half of my life never mm -hmm. thought of it like and never sh even uh, show like saw, saw somewhere you know and okay. after i finished my masters i went back and then i was connected with this one journalist and he told me that uh, i think you should take a tour of um, surat and then see if something uh, fascinates you because he shared a lot of uh, historical perspective with me and and i was like okay let's just do it so one day we just went on and then he okay. took me to this yeah, he took, he took me to this place and I was like, wow, what? We have this thing in Surat and I never knew. Yeah, and from that onwards, uh, I think it was the strike, like you, you get it to just feel those letters which are like sitting on the stone. And mm -hmm. and, and and even you think like, um, it's just abandoned, you know, and people come there for wedding photo shoots. And uh, as I mentioned, people were sleeping there. It's almost a resting place. So I said, OK, well, I know it's a really beautiful place. And yes, people can come and sleep here. But why not to actually save the, those letterings, you know, even if um, in future, if somebody wants to have a reference of something, because these uh, cemeteries were one of the most beautiful cemeteries back in those days. So in all around India, Surat was the richest port. And um, this cemetery was uh, built up on very lavishly and executive uh, uh, way for, for merchants, like mostly those high profound people, you know. 
uh, who, who were the part of East India companies. So that's why you will see the graves, are, I mean, the whole Mussolini part is also so well structured. And, and to be very honest, it's still intact. It's like it's still holding there. It's been like mm -hmm. decades and decades, yeah. So I think that was something that attracted me. And I visited twice. Um, and then uh, in 1919, I said, okay, let's just go with a paper and trace it out and see what I can get. Yeah. Wow, that's so amazing. You know, that was actually a not plan plan, okay? <laughs> not plan plan, exactly. And I, you know, sometimes it says that when you don't plan something and you do it, it just works. So I think that that was a thing. And it's a sad part that I could not go back because I wanted to during this 2020 and supposedly I could not travel. So uh, a lot of context has been coming from old archives as well. Plus the rubbings, what I've done in 2019, which I was very lucky that at least I, said, at least I could have got something, you know. So those were my initial uh, drawings, yeah. Hopefully to take it forward. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I hope this pandemic will, you know, end very soon so that you can also yeah. uh, speed up your work, whatever you had planned for 2020 maybe you can do that in 2020, totally. yeah, hopefully <laughs> hopefully yeah. yeah yeah and i i was like you know because um as being someone who's also working and you know reviving um, a lot of scripts so yeah i was very interested to learn what kind of challenges that you have found during your journey uh during my cemetery um... yeah 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 so um I would say that when you are, um, let's say you're rubbing something, right? So because the surfaces are very uneven and plus the style of a carving is different. So one stone has actually so tiny chisel. If I can just measure it, it's almost like almost half a centimeter of a stem. Um, the first gray, what I showed, the stem size is only half a centimeter. And to actually mm -hmm. get that uh, uh, detail uh, of uh, the end part of the serif and uh, also um, I could not get it on a paper, but if I can just go back and do it very precisely, then there are two lines actually happening in the stem itself. So um, yes, it is a tedious job and uh, it would take some uh, more Precision plus, uh, I would say, if I can, if any of um, uh, people here who would give me an advice of, okay, maybe you can try this or this, I'm happy to do it, you know. And because I'm also reading a lot of material on how to actually care for the archival uh, manuscripts and uh, those uh, engraves as well. So uh, maybe. Um, some material which I've never uh, used yet, maybe like a, a plaster of Paris to get a mold out of something or uh, a clay, I can I can paste it on and then try if I can get a nice uh, structure of the letter, I would try it. Yeah, okay. so, <laughs> so a lot of experiments. Like person, right? It's like Sorry? one man army. For now, it's, a one -man it's army, like yeah. one man army. Yeah. <laughs> For now, for sure. But then I was just I was I was thinking a lot about this project that uh, it can't be a one man's job, you know. Like you you do need yeah, um, specialized people for this, and you do need a, a team of designers or type designers even um, where uh, you can give them those uh, uh, models and then see like how you can get a, a, a proper shape out of it, you know, for the letter form. So I mean, you never know. This is just a beginning, you know. And uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. And I wish you thank all you. the best for your future projects. And we would thank love you. to hear more from you in coming days. Hopefully, thank inshallah you. soon. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and we will, of course, meet in hangout rooms. Yes, we do. We do. <laughs> <laughs> that was really all nice right. moderating you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you, bye -bye. Thank thank you all the for joining. Yeah. Yeah, thank you all the sponsors who have actually, you know, made this uh, amazing conference happen. Thank you for your support and thank you our tech team. Thank you, Itai Pai. We'll thank see you. you in the next session. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.